Hello, Carol Taylor Carney here at Pallian Arts. I'm here with E. Sherman Heyman, and she's going to talk to us about her artwork in this storied show that's coming up at Pallian Arts. So, E. Sherman Heyman, or Mer. Mer, people call me Mer. <laughs> what do you have to tell us about? This is exciting. These tiny little caskets, which are mixed media with bits of jewelry and glass and carved wood, are part of a series, or I should say project, that I did for many, many years about death. The title of the project was The Final Frontier. And I had multiple smaller projects within the big concept, and I didn't know how to begin exactly. I did a lot of research. I found wonderful, wonderful anecdotes about people in, I think, the Trobian Islanders, that when a loved one died, they didn't bury them. They kept them. They were put in a sort of a big barrel with I'm not sure what kinds of fluids to preserve the body. And the body lived in the hut or the house with the family, so you never really lost your loved one. There were many, many stories like that, and I couldn't wrap my mind around it, so I thought I would do something that was amusing and funny, so I started with these little carved caskets, the title of which is Late, because one of the things that used to bug me was death, is sort of treated the, the way we used to treat sex. You couldn't talk about sex. And death, usually people don't say he died, he passed. He went to the great beyond. But he also just died. And the avoidance of the whole concept is at stark contrast to the things I was reading about centuries past, in the not too olden days, before there were undertakers and mortuaries, when someone in your family was sick and dying, and they were really sick, they probably were dying because medicine wasn't up to par then, they'd be at home. Mm -hmm. And they'd almost be holding court. And people, relatives, friends, would come to pay respects. Um, this would be a moment in time when the dying person would issue blessings or wishes or thanks or convey love. And there'd be an exchange, if, if the person was conscious, of just a beautiful life being looked at and a nice saying goodbye as opposed to now, which we try to remove ourselves from. So I started with late, which is another word people don't say, oh yeah, he died, but he's late. What? Late for what? <laughs> um, so late, and I think I had did 38 of these little caskets. So the first one is an homage to Fred Astaire. When I was working on these little caskets, I just started doing research about artists and renegades and famous people and not so famous people. Um, there's one that I didn't show you. Um, I think Maggie O'Hare was her name. She was a famous pirate in the 1600s. And she was really vicious also. But um, she was well known. She was feared. She ran her ship. <laughs> Right. So I did something in homage to her. This one was particularly fun. Fred Astaire, his cane top hat, and his beautiful outfit. Um, He's already tuxedoed. Tuxedoed, <laughs> ready to go. And Roy Lichtenstein, who really was a, a, a major voice in pop art and um, really left a legacy and changed the way we look at, I should say, look at art that's not abstract because this was all happening right after the abstract movement, I guess, I hope. But this one has text 
And if you look closely, I tried to copy Lichtenstein's textures the way you did dotted thing, which is you can't really see. Can you see it? Yes, I can mm -hmm. see it. Dotted texture. Yeah. I tried to make so. I love the red with the purple. Yes, that's exactly what it is. And this is the Lichtenstein lady saying, so he professed to be anti contemplative, anti nuance, anti movement and light, and this was something that was thrown at Lichtenstein during an interview. Not lovely. <laughs> no, that's something that you could say to a dead person. Yes. <laughs> and this, this was one of my favorite ones to do. This is an homage to Julia Child, who brought French cooking, French cuisine, to America. Um, she has wonderful history, uh, including the famous bit on Saturday Night Live. Oh, this is again an act of white, this is hand cutting chicken or something. So, what I tried to do with her casket is the casket handles are actually a knife, fork, and spoon. And her casket top mimics a pie crust and little tiny beads. That look like cherries, so it hopefully is a cherry pie casket. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a tiny little flag that has the American flag on one side and the French flag on the other side being held up by the fork. So, but there are, there are so many things I learned about deaf customs that just knocked me out. And I did, um, I did series about within this concept of um, methods of execution. That one was not amusing. <laughs> that one was not funny. But it was a very intriguing, very visual going from the guillotine to the electric chair to the injection. So there was a whole piece about that. Um, then there are various pieces in the series that are dealing with words, which, as yes. you know, I deal with words in all this text of famous last words. And I made a piece that looked like um, tombstone heads, where I hammered in the text of some of these famous things. One of my favorites was, I told you I was sick. So that one, I was going back to Charles Lieber uh, to the Lightning Road. But uh, some of these were uh, more depressing, but not late. They were meant to be lifting. Oh. In looking at them, on the one hand, we can see they're all casket shapes, I mean, traditional casket shapes. But they're each so painful that um, you you kind of sit on that brink that normalizes it and brings it back into discussion. Yeah, removes stigma. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And um, I also noticed that I was picking them up. And um, how do you feel about people who come in and take a look at these? Are they supposed to be picked up or are they supposed to be kept? Sacred on the shelf. Um, I think they shouldn't be picked up just because. I'm, I'm not talking about your everyday visitor. I'm talking about oh, some of so the. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, um, some of the um, ones that I've sold in the past that were displayed under Buxton's top specifically did not want the top because they wanted it to sit on a mantle or someplace mm -hmm. where people could come and touch it if they wanted. So yeah, absolutely. It just cool. And that's why you should have lucite boxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And as a matter of fact, lucite boxes, if, when you buy one of these, will come with you. I think they're yeah. a great idea because what you worry about with art is whether it gets dusty or, you know, what if somebody, you know, spills something or whatever. Keeps them protected, right. and yet they're available to you at all times. Yes, I love those. 
Well, thank you so much. Uh, it, it, you had lots of great stories, and I, these are just absolutely fun and wonderful and well made. And I hope everyone comes here to Calais Arts to see them for the first annual jury show. And you can see the rest of them on my website. Oh, and there's a, there's also a um, what, a film by John Thornton. Thornton. So great film. Make sure you see it too.